five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. about midnight Eastern Daylight Time here in the United States of America. Uh, and um, a little bit later, let me turn the light on here. Bum, bum. Uh, a little bit later, uh, we'll be uh, talking to our citizen panel. Had a little trouble getting on tonight. I'll, uh, I can explain that later. It's, it's just, you don't want to hear about it. You, know, you, know, you really don't want to know how the... Um, how the uh, uh, cow is uh, steak is made. How the cow is killed. You just want the steak, okay? So, I don't know. It was just a technical problem and something where I screwed up, as as usual, where I screwed up. But here's where I don't screw up. Let's go out now and uh, talk to our wonderful ex-wife, looking you straight in the face, <laughs> because of this wonderful thing called Skype. It's Ronnie Bennett. Good hi, Ronnie. Morning. Yes, hi. Good morning. How are you? How you feeling? I'm okay. I'm all right. Yeah. Now you told me something that immediately hit me. Uh, that you said you went to physical therapy. Well, you see, one of the side effects of chemotherapy, which I've not done for several months, is neuropathy, which I have in my feet and my hands. Mm -hmm. But also, I've been waking. I've discussed this. I don't know here, but somewhere before. Um, with a lot of pains in body joints mm -hmm. and normal over-the-counter uh, treatment will take care of them. It takes two hours in the morning to kick in when I look pretty funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then a doctor last week, I have a lot of doctors and they change two from time to time, so this was a new one, I look pretty funny. Mm -hmm. suggested for uh, my hands but, that I can barely close this much. And I mm -hmm. think I've talked about it. Hard to hold a toothbrush when you can't close your hands any further than this. Yeah. Um, and I thought that it could help. And I think it's from chemo and I'm stuck with it, but what the hell, I'll give it a try. So I went yesterday. And there's this woman I met. <laughs> it's called occupational therapy, and I've forgotten the difference between that and physical therapy. But all she deals with are hands. That's it just hands i mean you know we joke about doctors slice and dice medical care into these yeah. tiny little yeah part. well she only does hands and i was you know expecting her to say but only these two fingers or something and uh, so she gave me some exercises that should give me less pain she said in time so we'll see we will see but i was interested that you know for all of my joking about if you go to a pulmonologist, he can't answer questions about pain, and the Diana doctor who handles that can't answer questions about something else, and so on. Well, there was my proof yesterday. I went to see the very nice hand lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you say you were only there, you told me you were only there for a couple of minutes? No. Oh, okay, I thought you said that. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, yeah. no. Full, full scale examination and teaching me how to do the more, my now morning exercise. My morning routine, Yeah. it's now got such a long list that's hard to know that I ever will do it all unless I write it down. Well, I had a torn meniscus, and I, I went to physical therapy. Uh, and uh, the thing, I, you know, I, here's the thing I thought. I go to physical therapy, and the guy would, like, rub me, put stuff on me, make me feel better. But no, he's telling me all these things I'm supposed to do when I get home. Right. And, yes. And I never had a I never time. had a, an area of medicine that required homework. <laughs> you know? Yeah, me too. I have homework. <laughs> you know, and I'm going. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to like knead me and push me and prod me and cr uh, no? Go see a chiropractor if you want that. You know. But you know what? Once before, you know, as I've yeah. often mentioned, until the cancer. I was, you know, 76 years disgustingly healthy, but I developed thing, something 
that I came to learn is known in the vernacular mm -hmm. as foot flop. And one of my feet, I would take a step as you normally do, and the other one would flop down. Mm -hmm. And I'd take a step and this would flop down. And so the doctor sent me to a physical therapist. And it turned out, if you want, if you care, there's some nerve that runs down your leg. And if you cross your legs, which I do mm -hmm. when I sit, yeah. uh, it can damage that nerve and that causes foot flop. And I'm thinking, yeah, 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 I didn't know anything about physical therapy except what you see in the movies and you don't know whether to trust that or not. So this physical therapist gave me, like I have now, he gave me about five minutes worth of exercises to do every day. Yeah. And, you know, I'll give it a shot. I don't believe in it, it doesn't seem to me, but I'll give it a shot. And it worked. So I have a great deal of respect now for physical therapists. Yeah, well, they're, they're, uh, uh, my physical therapist got rid of my torn meniscus, although I just tore it again. But uh, I know what to do with it this time. But it, it you know, um, it, 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 physical therapy does, does work. I, I then got neuropathy in my feet, <coughs> I had it fairly badly. And I went to the uh, uh, to the physical therapist, and he really he didn't agree with my doctor that the I have my feet are kind of hurting on the bottoms. He said that's not neuropathy, that's plantar fasciitis. And so he had me do a thing where I roll my feet on a well. He gave me a golf ball. I've since sent away for the official plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis uh, uh, rub on the bottom of your Alex, football. Alex, can we move on? <laughs> well, here's what I have. This is this this is the thing I use. Okay. Yeah. And as I'm talking to you, I'm rolling it under yeah. my foot. Can we move on? I mean, I understand why young people don't want us talking about these things. Well, it's better I'm doing that than masturbating for crying out loud. You know. I, Alex, how do you go to this place? I don't know. I that's me. You know me. You no, know. I mean, just, you know, could you leave that part out? <laughs> I'm just trying to say things could be worse. You know, but oh. anyway. So so the the physical therapy has been working for your hands. I don't know. It's only the first day. Oh, well, okay. I, I just You just said you had a whole new appreciation, and I well, went. Well, that was from the story I told you about my foot flop. Oh, about the foot flop. I never, Which I think it's a great name, flip flop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the opposite of flip flop. Uh, you know what I mean? A, um, I wanted to ask you about um, Sharpie Gate. Sharpie Gate, yeah. Yeah. What about it? I've thrown it to you, darling. Well, I, I have to give him credit. He does know how to do a semicircle. So, you know, I mean, he, he did a very, it was a very, it was very cleanly done, uh, but it still was so obvious, it was ridiculous, you know. And uh, I, uh, but well, the part that got me is, uh, I can't remember who it was in his cabinet, threatened to fire people at Russ. the, yeah, at the weather people stuff, who, uh, who said that he was wrong, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, this is getting to be like, we're going to make the truth happen, even if it's a lie. You know? This is now, before it was a joke. I mean, mm -hmm. our idiot president, right? Mm -hmm. um, who just can't let go of anything. Now it's deeply serious. What has happened is, if it's not the least political, it's one of the least political agencies of the federal government, NOAA, NOAA. It's the fucking weather the department, you know? I'm sorry, I was saying something yeah, and you said? It, it was it was a goddamn weather department. I mean, it's the weather, you know? Yes, that's what I'm saying, that it's science-based and the least political, except for the very top appointees, the, one of the least political agencies of our government. It is now a political agency, and I would guess that every head, every political head of every agency in the United States government now feels free to lie to us, even if it could cost lives, within, which in this case it could have. Well, I mean... Uh, and, and this is a serious slide uh, out of democracy and into something else awful. 
Well, I heard something about what he did being illegal. In other well, it's words, not about that because nobody will do anything about anything being illegal. It'll, yeah. That's you know, we know nobody is ever, you know, with the exception of what three or four people that were most obvious about it. Nobody gets prosecuted for any potential crimes in this government. Yeah. Um, and they all, I mean, you can, we could talk about, in that respect, talk about the Scotland airport in Turnberry, you know, and so on. Yeah. Um, but this thing where the head of a cabinet, in a head cabinet position, says, I will fire you if you don't lie about what the president said. We don't have any way to trust anybody in government anymore. Well, that also yeah. puts nobody. A, that also, a yeah, that, person. Well, that puts a lot of people on notice that if you do something that goes against the president and what he has said. No, no, no. That's not the point. You're yeah. missing the point. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's all true. We all know that. Yeah. But the point is that the government, as a democracy, is gone. It has disappeared as of Ross saying that. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Anybody can do that now. I will fire you unless you say out loud to the press exactly what I tell you. So how do we, and when it's something like the weather service, we saw what it did. We're still, we're going to see for years what it did in the Bahamas and so on. Um, and any agency, even the ones like the weather services that are, as non-political you can get, whether is or whether isn't, you know? I mean, there's there's nowhere in between. There's now all in between and no fact. Yeah. And anybody can do that in the federal government now. It's, uh, you're not worried? Uh, of course I'm worried, you know. Uh, but I meant that rhetorically, but you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, but in a way, they passed it off as kind of a little piffle of sorts. You know, like, oh, well, it's just a Sharpie on a map. No, it wasn't who just did? a sharpie. Who did? Who did that? A, a, a lot of the Republicans were trying to just like, you know, oh, it's I, just a tempest in a... Republicans haven't even discussed it. It's a tempest in a teapot, some people were saying. You know, why make a big deal out of this? And and you you're giving... You're giving who said that. You're giving every reason for them to... Uh, for, for, for why we should care about something as simple as taking a sharpie and changing a map. You know? On the face of it, it looks like something very simple, but it isn't. Well, it's not simple. It's destruction of democracy. Yeah, yeah. Simple or not isn't the point. It's a, it, it, it's a huge, large chunk of the integrity of the federal government is gone mm -hmm. because everybody will feel free to do this now without consequence. You know, you're, you're the one person I can come to and say, when I was a boy, and you could understand, <laughs> and I was there, <laughs> and, you, and you were there, or you were there within a short amount of time, about a year yes. l earlier than, uh, later than me, but you know, when I was a boy, we had a certain idea of what this country was, a and and we treated it with a, a great deal of respect, and said, you know, this is America, and this, you were taught in school, this is what being an American is. Everything that Trump is doing goes counter to everything you and I were taught in school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people would make the argument that there are things we were not taught. There were schools that did not teach about the concentration camps for Japanese in World War II. Right. Or the murder of most of the original uh, inhabitants of North America, mm -hmm. um, and we weren't taught those things. I mean, Lewis and Clark were big heroes, right? I didn't know about the rest of it. And Sacago poor Sacagawea has to stand in for every other Native American of that era. Um, and uh, well, I suppose you're right, you know. Yeah. Um, except for us old folks who remember that. But oh, the, you want to hear one that I was taught? So the oh. thing that's so awful about this, yeah. it's so awful, is lives were at stake. And now it's business as usual. If you run an agency, particularly I suppose if President Trump appointed you to head it up, mm -hmm. 
You can go stand in front of a bunch of media microphones and cameras and say anything you want, whether it's true or not. And that's that. There is no consequence. And it can mean, in terms of weather, it can mean horrendous amount of death and destruction. And uh, I don't, I think there's somebody I read in the, maybe the New York Times or the Washington Post this morning who took up the point of view of exactly what I'm talking about with you. But it's the only one I've seen. And I read pretty widely. I get an awful lot yeah. of news newsletters in my email box every morning and I click through and read a lot of it. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't see anybody else talking about it from that point of view. It's the only one that makes sense to me that we must recognize what I've just said. I don't know what we can do about it. I don't have an answer. You know, you, we, we were talking about when, what we were taught in school. Let me tell you something I was taught in school that will just absolutely... This, all things weren't wonderful when we were kids. You know, we'd like to think so, but in years that have passed, all this seems ridiculous. I, I took psychology in high school, and in the psychology book, it said that if you were an idiot, you had an IQ of 0 to 25. IQ 25 to uh, 50 was imbecile. Uh, 50 to we 70. We don't use those words anymore. Though. I know those we, we don't, years. but we were taught this then. 50 to 70 was moron. And you're going to die when you hear this. 70 to 80 was American Indian. Really? Yes, that was in my psychology book. Wow. And so, of course, being taught that, I believed for a while that the American Indian had a low IQ. But it was yeah. it was definitely in the book. You know? Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we don't use those terms anymore, do we? Do we have those classifications any longer? Well, who was it that called the president a moron? <laughs> he got fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Uh, um, but we haven't used those in decades, you know. But, no, I had never heard that. What's your, heard what's your prediction for the election? Do you have any predictions, any thoughts about the chances that we can get this guy out of office? No, because I think that, you know, we've got way more than a year until people vote. Mm -hmm. And so much can happen in that period of time. And you don't know from our point of view now what's going to be important. For example, I've made a very, very big deal about Wilbur Ross and the whole, um, what gate, what, which gate is this? Sharp, Sharpie right? gate. Sharpie gate. Sharpie gate. Um, you know, that, that has very, very serious overtones. And, um, and other things will come up that will be played up that don't need to be and played down that should be played up. Mm -hmm. And how the, the, the country responds to it will have so much to do with the election. I think that what we can know now is like the election, is it in South North Carolina today? Mm -hmm. The one that was left over from the 2018 election. Um, and it was so close between the Republican and the Democrat that they had to do a, re a redo, so everybody's voting again today, or are the ones who choose to. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe that will tell us, give us a little bit of a hint. They're trying to tell us, at least the media I see, <laughs> um, is that the Republican, that Republicans uh, don't support Trump anymore, but nobody's going to say that out loud. Well, why? You know, um, then there are all the Republicans resigning and not rerunning, you know, running to um, to stay in their seats in Congress. But I don't know that an awful lot isn't going to change between now and Election Day that doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that yet that those things make a difference. Yeah. Um, I think it's very serious since Congress apparently still will do absolutely nothing to rein in Trump and his um, uh, grifter appointees. Well, it, it'll be up to us, the people, 
if we want if we want to change well, in government. You know, what, what, not, what, Congress will not do anything. It's shown us that for two Congress, and a half, three years. Congress hasn't done anything about uh, the emoluments clause. I mean, the fact that this guy is still doing business when he shouldn't be is ridiculous. You know that he has his uh, he has his vice president, I think it was, uh, go. 200 miles out of his way to stay at a Trump uh, uh, resort in, uh, where was it, Ireland or someplace like Scotland. that? Scotland. Uh, uh, it got worse. It got worse. Uh, and apparently, hundreds of trips that used to be made through other ways, mm -hmm. uh, military airplane trips, are now stopping at that same airport next to his uh, next to his resort there, Turnberry, mm -hmm. and um, and staying overnight there, and then going on to wherever they were going to in the Middle East or something somewhere. And apparently that's been going on since the beginning, and it's the only thing that keeps that airport afloat financially because there's nothing else there but the golf course. And so Trump is ha has... Apparently, we don't know for sure yet, but there seems to be a lot pointing in that direction, has done a deal with the airport to have military transport refuel there at higher cost than if they went to an, an American base in Europe to refuel. Hmm. Um, so, it, you know, it doesn't stop. But, but why, you know, why we don't stop him from doing this? I don't you know, understand Why we that. Say, don't say to him, look, you cannot do business. You have to put yourself in a blind trust. You know, which he, I don't think he's done that, uh, you know, uh, which every president does, so that he doesn't make decisions based upon his own personal wealth, you know. And in, in this case, you not only have a president who supposedly has great wealth, but in fact does not and is getting rich off of this, you know. Well, you know, I mean, that, the, that's, you know, kind of the overview on, it's the specific things that bother me that Congress has done nothing about. Now, the laws are all terribly fuzzy about this. I just don't believe there isn't something that can be done if you're not, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I don't know what's wrong with the Democrats. They've always taken advantages and turned them into disadvantages all my life. Well, I, um, think, I think the Democrats have this sense of uh, being nice or trying to be nice, and that you can, you, that kills them every time because somebody, somebody like Trump comes along and takes advantage of that, you know. You know, you could have wept yesterday again because of Trump that more than 100 people were turned away in the Bahamas from a boat going to Nassau because they didn't have visas. And Trump's out there, again, said he had to to do this because there were drug dealers and bad people, very, very bad people, that's the quote, coming on those boats as refugees. Well, I, I think the drug dealers are also refugees in this case. <laughs> yes, yeah. they're legitimate <laughs> refugees. I mean, the destruction's pretty total. <laughs> um, but and apparently, I can't find it anywhere this morning, apparently it had been said that anybody could travel, you know, on these boats that are coming by to get people mm -hmm. off of here because there's no water, there's no food, there's no nothing. They've got to go somewhere else. Yeah. And um, and then he backed the president said, no, 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 we had to take those people off the boat because they're drug dealers and bad people. And uh, he, uh, he uses that as a scare tactic every time. Drug dealers, uh, rapists. Uh, you know, when uh, there's no proof that any of those people were that, you know, and uh, and these were people who needed help. We were talking about a boatload of two or three hundred people. It doesn't matter. Just get them somewhere where they can get fresh water and food sorted out later. Right. The humanitarian problem first. And uh, what is the what is it's this? It's just that you just weep. At this, yeah. I mean, well, imagine well, what, what, being, what, uh, if you know. Often, I don't know if it has yeah. to do with the drugs I take nowadays. Speaking of drugs, of the drugs I take nowadays or what, but I often come in from grocery shopping or lunch with a friend or something, just dying of thirst. Can't get a glass of water in my fist fast enough. Mm -hmm. And 
If you've ever been there, we all have, and think about there's nowhere to go for fresh water to drink. How do you even function when you feel like that? I, I, I just, it's just dumbfounding that every single morning, it seems to me you're damn close to that. I wake up and the president, the president himself, not somebody acting for him, and maybe then erroneously, every day the president has done something that is cruel to some group of people. Every single day. Close enough. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that wasn't what we were taught in school. We were taught we were wonderful people and we help people out. And when people are in need, we're the country who's there and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead, we got this, um, this, I won't use a term, uh, as, as president. By the way, I'd be happy to know my wife uh, has been banned from a Twitter. <laughs> How did she pull that off? <laughs> uh, uh, t well, uh, Trump's Twitter account. Because oh, she, not from Twitter. Uh, yeah, because she, uh, uh, I can't remember the term she used now, but she, she was calling him a whore or something. And they said, that's inappropriate behavior on, on Twitter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's inappropriate on Twitter. So uh, uh, she's been literally to wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah, she's been put on waivers for a while on uh, on on Twitter because of that, and she does take it with a badge of honor. You know, I'm yeah. very proud of her. You know? Yes, I said apparently, but he probably never saw it. But you know, somebody did. Yeah. Hey, there's a, there's something I'm curious about that the viewers probably can't see, but I want to see, and then they'll be able to. Mm -hmm. Off to your right shoulder, mm -hmm. there's in a very, we may have done this before, and I'm, I'm just too old to remember. Um, there's a photograph leaning against the thing that's a very elaborate gold photograph. Yeah. Our photograph, yeah. What is it? Um, you know? I don't know. It's Marjorie's. Oh, uh, it might be family, old family. I see. But it's a beautiful, I can't see the photograph, but the frame is beautiful. Oh, the frame is gorgeous. It's wonderful. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Okay, that's good. And we talked about. I really need more coffee badly. <laughs> um, me too. I, it's a bad. It, I, I uh, underslept, as it were. Underslept, okay. Yeah. But anyway, see, you feeling okay? I mean, everything's kind of. You know, given what is, I feel fine. You feel fine. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find her at timegoesby.net. That's her blog, and uh, it teaches you about what it's like to get old, which is <laughs> not necessarily depressing. Uh, Isn't it's a very good thing? I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm 78 and I'm still here. It's so better to be 78 than to have gone at 75, you know? So, oh, yeah. whatever. Hey, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, nothing's working tonight. Let me see here. Oh, <laughs> I, I do everything wrong. <laughs> Five years and still oh, talking. Boy. This is Gavin, oh, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. You know, I'm losing it. I'm absolutely losing it. I can't do this anymore. I think uh, this may be the end of a wonderful thing here. Because I just technically I I'm I'm getting flummoxed. Uh, we had a little problem when I first went on tonight, uh, and the problem was that, you know, everybody who has a company like YouTube or Facebook or whatever always think, you know, we'll make it better than it was. Okay, we can always make things better, right? So they 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 make a new Skype. And it sucks, okay? Uh, and they do a new um, whatever. So they, YouTube has changed its uh, format of how you put these shows together and everything. And they think it's so much better and so much easier. And the other day I, they said, here, try out the new control room. And I tried what they called the new control room. And what I didn't know is well, you have to have a key so that YouTube knows it's you and then it runs the show, uh, you know? And so you have to have the, is feed it that key uh, so that it, it knows uh, that it's you turning the whole thing on. 
Well, when I went to that program, it changed the key, and so when I went to turn it on tonight, nothing happened, okay? So I then had to go in, find the new key, feed it into this program I have here called OBS so that it can go out to you. As I said earlier, I, I know you, you know, you really don't want to know how the cow was killed. You just want to eat the steak, and probably I should just give you the steak and not explain how the cow is made. Uh, how the steak is, is killed or the cow is killed. Forget it. I can't even say that. So that screwed up. And then I tried to play uh, a promo here, you know, one of our uh, imagers here. Still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Thank you very much, Rob. And I, I, I didn't have the right one up. <laughs> it's it's terrible. I, I, I just, I'm getting really bad at this. And then, uh, you know, so I had that problem at the opening of the show. I mean, I, I'm, I can solve the problem pretty fast, but I'm making too many mistakes now. I didn't make this many mistakes before. So I think it's uh, getting worse and worse. But I didn't, I didn't get enough sleep last night, I guess. Anyway, boy, it is, it is hot in here. Let me, I don't know why, because the temperature outside is only 72. But we have this humidity factor that happens, and it's, you know, whatever. So anyway, it's time for you to call the program, and we have the lines are open. And if you don't call, I can quit this early, okay? Um, Damien didn't do a show tonight because his uh, lady uh, had a back problem or something that he had to attend to. So that was a repeat that I ran from two years ago. Oh, boy. That's why I don't like to turn this thing up this fast. I hate that. I also I hate that ring, by the way, that Skype has. It's not a pleasant I, ring I, I, at all. So I don't know. But anyway, uh, hey, look, who's here already? Uh, hey, Charlie, and he already had a space last time, so we put him down there. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, here comes some other people. Here comes Tom Yamaguchi. Oh, haven't seen Tom in a while. Uh, and let's see here. Here comes Ray Renati. Okay, now I got to somehow get these people. I've been here. I had to get have these give these people a place. Um, first of all, we'll put uh, Tom Yamaguchi in the hallowed top spot here. Okay, oh, there we I'll go. go. And, You're number one. And and number uh, number two uh, will be. Uh, let's see here. Number two will be. Uh, let's see here. Uh, who's the other? Who's the other one that we had? Ray Renati. So okay. that would be. Uh, bu 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 Wait a minute. Where is? Oh, there he is. Goomba. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That's the name. There's that. Okay. And then I got to go over to um, uh, the next thing here and add in Phil. Uh, he's scuba diver. That one I know by heart practically. And uh, let me see here. Let's go to that. Okay. Well, so far I'm doing this all okay. I'm not fucking any of this up tonight. So, yeah. Uh, God, I, I, hey, I Ray. What? I uh, call it after I finish riding my bicycle. <laughs> yes, Ray. We just lost Ray. See, he froze. No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I, I took off the mic. I turned off the mic. So it wouldn't be wind. Oh, okay, but you were frozen too. Yeah, uh, did yeah you, I might be getting out of range. Did I'm you, up in the hills. Did you hear what Tom just said? Yeah, I did, but uh, <laughs> I was working all day and I didn't have time. So, yeah. Yeah. How'd your play go this weekend? Uh, well, we opened this weekend. We just I was rehearsing all day. Oh no! When do you open this next weekend? Yeah. Oh, because yeah, you were Sunday, all, Monday, all kinds yeah, of stuff. It's just two days. It's just yeah. two days. Are, are you going? I don't know why. She, yeah. Are you going, Phil? Sunday. Uh, you are, Phil. Cool. Yeah, I gotta buy a ticket. I'll, I'll, I'll go. You have, all right. Is that your hint uh, to be comped? Is uh, what you're saying? No, no. I mean, oh, it's. it's uh, they, I, they, I'd you comp know, you if I could, but it's no, not. No, don't my, do it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I would rather be supportive uh, you know there's other things that go on there and uh you know it's not okay. like one comedian just getting the door gate this you know there's a lot that goes on i'd rather buy the ticket 
Yeah. Okay. And we'd Thanks. rather you buy the ticket too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, although uh, no, Thursday, well, Friday, I'm getting comped uh, to to a show, and uh, your uh, your friend Larry Brown, uh, I'm photographing Gonzo again, and uh, but I'm not shooting Larry. He doesn't like new photos of him. He only wants shit that's 20 years old. Well, <laughs> that's good, Tom. Okay, I just want to mention, it's like, well, the main, huh? I just want to express, the main reason I called is I really want to express appreciation to your uh, wife, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. uh, the wonderful call. I really appreciate it. I was just curious when you recorded, because obviously you didn't talk about the latest with, uh, with uh, John. Yeah, well, actually, we did it at, uh, at, at noon today. Uh, turn your turn your mute your mic, will you please, Ray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, um, uh, we did that at noon today, and Bolton was fired at three or something like that. You know. Sure, because I I before I left, well maybe well, there's three usually, hours difference. Usually I get headlines on my I, but, uh, I get headlines on my watch, and I didn't see that till about two or three, so. Oh really? Yeah, I mean if I had gotten it, I would have mentioned it immediately. <laughs> You know. uh, about eight o'clock, eight thirty, eight o'clock. Yeah. I think I saw it. Yeah. Uh, uh, that it just happened. I don't have to follow uh, Trump on Twitter. I, everybody else retweets him, so yeah, that's I read it all. Except Marjorie, she can't be. Uh, she can't tweet anything of his or have anything to do with his uh, his well, Twitter feed, huh? She's blocked from his from his Twitter feed, right? Yeah. 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 But she but she can read his retweets when somebody retweets him. I guess. I guess, yeah. but never say you know, no, never say retweet. Uh, that's what Elmer <laughs> Fudd said. Um, <laughs> retweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, let me see here. Uh, oh, we, we've been just joined by somebody who's phone only. Who is this? That's Todd. Todd. It's Todd Moore. How you doing? Long time no speak, yo. I don't know. Todd. Who's Todd? Uh, Moore? He's he's a truck you driver. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah. uh, so you know, look, I'm getting so I, old. I've been now. trying to help him with his Skype. He called, he reached yeah. out to me the other day, and uh, he, he just he doesn't have it quite yet. But he, believe me, Alex, he is trying a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good, Todd. Thank yeah, you. I've been trying for the longest time, and you know, your buddy's been helping me out, but it's just. I mean, I got the computers and I got all the stuff in the truck. I'm in the 18-wheeler and and everything is not working. And I was trying everything with the cell phone and I hope I'm not interrupting. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah. So I apologize. No. I mean, I've been listening to everything and we talked a while back, but I was hoping to be uh, on the panel, but I, I really having a hard time doing it. Well, here you well, are. Todd, Todd oh. sent me a nice note. He said it was yes. The other day it was respect the brother day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We're yeah. on the panel. <laughs> but um, no. So I know uh, what I was saying, uh, Tom, was that we did it at, at three this afternoon. So I had no. Okay. Yeah, you know, I did it at noon today. So. Yeah. Usually, I try. Whenever I do Durst, I always run Durst day and day. Sometimes she's a day late, or maybe a little more than that. You know, whatever. Uh, um, Alex, you got a double fill on your uh, YouTube feed. I have, a, I have a double fill. Oh, well, that, yeah, that, that, that's not. You don't want that. That's not good. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I, just when I thought I wasn't fucking up tonight, uh, I'm I'm fucking up tonight. Hold on a second. Alex, please. Please don't be Check so it on me, and I'm looking at two fills. Don't don't be so hard on yourself, Alex. Please don't. I mean, you're doing the work of two people. You really need a producer. Well, you, well, that's who, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, you need resources. You need butt funding. Uh, you're doing the best you can. Yeah, I'm I, doing. Tom the, is right. I agree with him. Yeah. Uh, here comes John Perulis. Okay, is he going to be a video? <laughs> There we go. Alex, most people couldn't even come close to doing what you're doing. So you got rid of one of the fills. Yeah. Hey, John. <laughs> yeah, I got rid of one of the fills. And <laughs> oh, I will, can you see me? I can't see myself. I'll yeah. replace that I with... I see you on the bottom. Sorry. 
Let's Let's see see here. John Perula. So what what would he be? Oh, there he is. John P. Okay, here we go. Hi, Alex. Let me see here. Uh, Wait a minute. I got to... I got to do this, and there we go. Hello, John. Having a long time no see. Yeah, well, I've been seeing your buddy down there, you know, yeah. uh, Phil. Mm-hmm. But, and I haven't seen Ray in a while, but Ray's in a play now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ray, kick, Ray kick. is also bicycling. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought he was falling down uh, some kind of a, a, a chute or something, a parachuting. You know? No, nah, he's directing traffic, I think. Yeah, maybe we can get him to go skydiving and do this while jumping out of a plane. <laughs> it's about the only thing he hasn't done. Yeah, hey, if that okay, if, I will. if that Felix Bumgarner did it, uh, setting a world record skydive, uh, he was on YouTube Live, so Ray should be able to do that, too. Yeah. Oh, maybe, I, yeah, we, Ray could do that. Uh, uh, you know, Ray, let's have you try to do all kinds of things. So maybe you kill yourself, you know, while we're doing the show. And oh, that no. will be like really don't, big. Don't do it before Monday. It'll go viral. Yeah, don't go do it till Monday. We need to have those love letters read. You know. My freaking chain just fell off. <sighs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. That's the Thank Skype you. God's <laughs> punishing. See, oh, hi, hi, hi everybody. I'm sorry, I forgot to say hi to everybody. I'm a little bit shot. I've been working all day. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> so his 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 uh, your chain fell off. Yeah. Yeah. And then some guy tried to help me. So I now he was wh- yelling at me, but he was trying to help me. Did you put the chain? Did you put the chain back on? Yeah. That was yeah, quick. Yeah. I'm going again. <laughs> Boy, what a kind of a crap. Oh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, Tom, but doesn't he have a crappy bike if his chain's falling off? <laughs> it falls off the sprocket if you don't, if you're, if you're not uh, adjusting the levers the correct way. It, it happens all the time. Oh, okay. You just got to get off. You got to put it back on the sprocket again. Yeah. And then you're on. That that's when you use your derailleur. It's called. Derailleur, yes. Right. See, I know the I know the nomenclature. I used to have a bike. Uh, yeah. Was it 20 inches with a banana seat? No, this guy, I, there was this guy, the guy who uh, the guy who started the Vermont Teddy Bear Company. Uh, when he sold the Vermont Teddy Bear Company, uh, moved to Chicago and started the Chicago Bicycle Company. What he built were these old-fashioned bicycles, you know, like the Schwinn's with the big, the big like balloon, tires. balloon tires and everything. Yeah. And he gave me one. Wow. But I never used it. <laughs> Is it in the storage room? No, 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 no. I think I gave it away. I never used it. I'll tell you why. I had had a bicycle, which I liked. And it uh, it did a great, you know, it was a terrific bike. And then somebody stole it. Uh-huh. So then I bought another bike. But you know how sometimes when you buy a new bike, it doesn't feel like the old bike that you're used to? And it's not like you can take it back to the store and say you didn't have a, if I don't like it, guarantee that I can bring it back. So that bike never got used. And then the guy from Chicago gave me that bike. And I used it a bit. but And I kind of liked it. It was kind of sweet. It was kind of cute. Have a bell and a basket? I, I No, it didn't have a basket, Phil. <laughs> hey, hey, Alex, have you tried an electric bike? Have I tried an electric bike? Yeah. The only one I use is the one that goes nowhere at the gym. <laughs> you know, um, which is uh, I haven't done in a, about a week. I'm I'm kind of sloughed off. I don't know. Could you I'm, see Tom's hand? Oh, you, yeah, oh, oh hi, hi I, Tom. Yeah, because sometimes I don't. Uh, if you're not in the main, in the main yeah. picture, I don't uh, I don't see that. Yes, Tom. I'm just gonna say I've I've actually tried a, a, a electric bike. Uh, they. Had a uh, every year we have a, a program a event called Pedal Fest in Jack London Square, and there mm-hmm. were people that were selling electric bikes and were giving test rides, and I liked it. I mean, if I get to the point where I can't pedal a manual bike, I'm going for electric. Really? Oh but yeah. Isn't really an electric nice. bike called just a chintzy motorcycle? Uh, well, it's it's well, I guess you could call it that, but it's runs more efficiently because you can actually pedal. It's better than what was a, a moped. 
it's much better than those. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, you can pedal it, and it's just electrical assist. It's it's a very energy efficient. Tom in Berkeley, Narcy David's brother owns the electric Sorry. bike thing. Uh, I think it's on Shattuck, and uh, uh, I, I I knew that guy, and I knew Narcy, but uh, uh, the um, uh, he sells those electric bikes. And uh, are you familiar with that one in Berkeley? No, I'm not. I, I just know they're very expensive right now. I think by the time I'm ready for one, they'll hopefully be a lot cheaper. I mean, how much is an electric? <laughs> how much is an electric <laughs> bike? How much? I is think they're like fifteen hundred dollars. Or yeah, the, on the low end, all the <laughs> yeah. way up to eight or nine, even ten. Really? Who's making yeah. wait, those prices? Who's making this thing? Apple? China? Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I don't want to say the T word. Oh. But, well, uh, you know, with the tariffs, and, you know, the, yeah. all these companies are being hurt. It, it could be a lot of fun when the battery blows up, because if it's a Chinese battery, most of those, you know, they're, they're oh, catching on fire. Let's not talk about batteries, God. Well, the, the, you know, it's not just ch ch Chinese batteries. I mean, the whole idea of lithium ion is these things just are meant to explode, you know. Uh, well, you know, I've always, with cameras and things, I've always bought either name brand or the uh, factory battery, like a Nikon battery. Yeah. I, you know, that Nikon battery for my camera is 153 bucks. I can get a Chinese one for $29, but, you know, am I going to risk a $6,000 body for uh, $125 in savings? Yeah, good yeah. thinking. Oh, oh, here comes Todd I think Moore. I got it. Here comes Todd Moore I think again. I got it. Oh, wow. Got it? Okay. Okay, Todd, are you there? There he is. Does he have video? Hey. Does he have video? Okay, oh, let you've me. You've got your um, uh, the audio coming out of your phone too. Uh, yeah. Let, yeah. let me see here. I, I've, got, I've got to put him in the uh, seventh spot because I didn't have video on him. Alex, you have to hang up on his phone, otherwise yeah. he's going to have yeah. uh, two two yeah, sounds. I'm stereo. Yeah. Well, hang up on your phone. What, 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 what's the got name it. you're oh, using? Oh, he got it. Okay. Let me there see here. Got. You know, oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, I think oh, that, I that might be wow. it. No, is Same that way. it? Is that it? Hold on a second. Sorry. No, now you got to oh, turn. Yeah, now you have to turn oh. yourself. Turn yourself into your into the, what we call the landscape mode. Turn your phone uh, uh, around. Turn your phone so it's around. sideways. So it's sideways. So we can. No, uh, no, 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 no. Take the oh. phone and turn yeah. it. Uh, he's starting to. No, <laughs> explain no. what you would. Uh, Todd, can you see my phone? Can you see my phone, Todd? You see how it's this way and not this way? Yeah, he just turned yeah. it. He just That's turned the way it. You want. No, okay. he didn't turn it yet. There we go. There we go. Okay, okay. okay but, but now, and I hate to say this, we can barely see you because it's so dark and you're not exactly of a light complexion. He He's in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to turn the lights on in here. Yeah, there you go. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's don't fine. get pulled over by the cops. So we got a guy in a truck and a guy <laughs> oh, on. You funny. We got hey, a guy on okay, a truck huh? and a guy on a bike. A guy in the truck. God, do we have a, anybody else want to call on some kind of conveyance? <laughs> How about a hot air balloon. Yeah. Yeah, a hot air balloon. Right. Well, speaking of a hot air balloon, hi Phil. Hey, I'm, I'm hot. Hey, so's the guy uh, in North Carolina, the the uh, uh, Republican one. The, on yeah, the but, but, but by very oh, little. No, that's true. He beat him, Marine. You mean the someone that actually saw this country? Wait a minute. What's all that noise? Wait a minute. What? What's all the noise? Oh, Dan. Oh, good. Who's, I don't know whose uh, noise that is. Uh, uh, um, um, Todd, is that uh, maybe that's you? Yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't, that wasn't my noise. I don't think. You don't think so? Okay. Uh, Ray, turn it down. But Ray's probably muted. But you can mute it if yeah. you're. Yeah. Oh, good, good idea. With uh, oh, did you? Was that you, Ray? That was noisy. I can't see Ray anymore. It's nighttime yeah, now. He's pixelated. Yeah, and there goes my theory that white people show up in black backgrounds. You know. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> oh, shit, really. I work this hard to get here, and you do it with a white piece of shit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was me. Messed up, hurtful stuff, brother. I thought we were all family. You yeah. Jewish? I love you. We with you. Now we're family. Hey, Todd, it's Respect the Brother Week. Say it again? Isn't it Respect the Brother Week? Yeah. 
Well, now, ain't nothing about it. Hey, the brother week, I love you too, my man, even though you're on the other side of the aisle. I love you. <laughs> By the way, we thank you. Family, familiar, Esse on patio. I had everybody, I had everybody's audio low too. I've been, I've been, I'm fucking up tonight. This is terrible. It's just like I can't uh, do anything right, you know. Yes, uh, Jeff. Relax. You're doing it much better than anybody else here can get. Yeah, well. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot which pot the sound was up on, and so I had it low, so everybody was really low. Now everybody's loud. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So, well, I hate myself. That's the reason why. Wow. And so does everybody else hates me. So. Take a break. <laughs> well, it's going to be a good week, Alex. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, uh -huh. I'm getting together with a friend in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or no, no. Tomorrow, I'm seeing little Stevie Van Zant at the UC Theater. Uh, then Thursday, I'm getting together with a friend in the called, city. I don't think he's called little Stevie Van Zant. That's what they call it, Little Stevie yeah. oh, Van Zandt. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, then, um, uh, let's see, uh, Friday I'm shooting Gonzo, mm -hmm. and then Sunday I'm going to go to Love Letters. Well, Sunday we don't do a show. Well, yeah, well, that doesn't count. Hey, Phil, you should stop by my house before you go to the show. I'm too shot to do anything uh Friday night, but but if you want to stop by here, why don't you swing oh, by? Oh, on the way? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's well, in Novato? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a nice place. Trick Winery. So, so, they're right. they're a doing a lot of yeah. comedians. Uh, now. Yeah, so Larry Brown will be uh, playing and uh, oh. we're acting and oh. doing his thing. Oh, cool. Here, here comes yeah. Kevin. Wow, we're getting, uh, we're, we're getting, we're almost. Look, Ray, look at, Ray looks like a big hey. wobbling back and forth. <laughs> You're right. Let me see here. No, that's not the one I want. Cancel. Cancel. I got to go to eight. Boy, I'm just, I'm, I'm fucking up. It's fucking up like crazy. You got nine tonight so far. Nine tonight so far. One more so and far. you get a full Wait house. A Kevin, yeah, Kevin, 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 where did we, Hog Rider. There he is. See, as I get a lot of people here, the names start popping up. Uh, um, there, wait a minute. There we go. There's there he is, and uh, yeah, he's he's a part. Now look at that. We got uh, eight people. One more, and it'll be a full house. But I don't. I don't expect that will happen. So. Uh, no. Never say never. Never say never. How you doing, Kevin? All right. How you doing, Alex? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm heading towards senility. Today I was doing an interview. You'll <laughs> hear it. You'll hear it in the next couple of days with Stephen Pearl. All right, and I mentioned John Goodman. Now, this is this is going to show you an, a gray moment, okay? And I said, yeah, I loved him in that movie. Uh, Flintstones? Huh? No, the, the Flintstones. Big, the Big Lebowitz. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, the Big Lebowitz, uh, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And I said, yeah. the Big Lebowitz. <laughs> and it didn't sound right to me. <laughs> <laughs> and and it turns out, of course, it's Lebowski, but I'm fucked. Okay, that's the way I am. Okay, so I'm sorry. But uh, wow. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, what else? Uh, let me see here. So we we had uh, we had uh, Bolton uh, got fired by Trump. Uh, Probably yeah. a smart move. Uh, well, any, everybody hates Bolton, so even Trump haters hate. They are glad Bolton got fired. Yes, Tom. The actual he actually resigned. He said and he did. Yes, he did. Well, Trump uh, says he fired like, him. Who are, he said who, he asked for his resignation. Who are you going to believe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a, a man who says <clears throat> I resign, and another man says. Let's talk about it in the morning. Or the man says, I fired him. Who are you going to believe? I fired him. Either one of those do guys. Trump that, do you believe the Trump over John Bolton? I, I think Trump. That, that's it's, a hard it's, choice. It's Tom. semantics. No, I think Trump. I, you know, I'm, I'm like anybody else. I, I, don't, I wouldn't have hired Bolton in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I can't call Bolton a liar. I think it's Trump semantics. Is a liar. He's a serial liar. 
Okay? So if it's a choice between the veracity of John Bolton and Donald Trump, I'm going to accept the veracity of John Bolton. Tom, well, why did you, Bolton say he quit? He if, you quit. Ask, well, if you oh, ask... You know why he quit? You want to know why he quit? Yeah, yeah. I know why he because, quit. Because Trump invited the Taliban to Camp yeah, David, David, a secret meeting with Camp David. He was going to make a big announcement on 9-11 that a peace treaty was 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 uh, developed, you know, uh, you know, to end of the uh, the Iraq Afghanistan war, and that fell apart. Bolton was totally opposed to that, and most sec national security people. As once again, I'm saying, I'm not a fan of John Bolton, but in this case, John Bolton was right. Okay, it was a bad, bad decision to bring the Taliban to Camp David days before the anniversary what? of 9-11. That's it in a nutshell. Okay. That's why I resigned. Mm -hmm. um, I believe he could quit. I believe Bolton would quit over that. Yeah. Well, I mean, apparently there was some, some disagreement hmm. there, which made it impossible for him <laughs> to continue. You say? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, uh, all, uh, Trump does everything for show, and that was that whole thing with the Taliban was, you know, it was out of, out of nowhere, you know. I mean, that kind of thing. You you have some discussions going on beforehand, and you check to see that it's going to be it's going to be worth your time to do it, and all of that. It looks like he just did it because it sounded like a good idea. Hey, in nine eleven, I'll say I'm talking to the Taliban. That's it. Because yeah. he could remember 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you hey, think? I dropped out for a minute uh, because Skype crashed my whole computer. Did you know, it? I've seen, I saw this blue screen I've never seen before. It had a weird icon on it that said you, you need updates and everything. And so that's why I went down. But yeah. I'm going to have to leave uh, in about 15 minutes or something. Yeah, well, whenever it what? is. What? <laughs> Who said that? Oh, my bad. Sorry. So, Todd, you're driving a truck, right? Well, I heard him say he was leaving. I was like, what? Sorry. My bad. Yeah, so you're you're driving a truck right now, right? Um, I'm off duty right now. Um, I'm in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, my company decided to uh, not give me enough work for the night, so I have the day off. Oh, so you have the day off. So where are, are you just some – you're not near home, are you? Oh, I'm I'm never in home. Um, I'm in Dallas, Texas, right now. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, how they, they, they gave you your man your mandatory thirty two without without choice. <laughs> uh, where, yeah, that, that exactly. That's uh -huh. exactly what it is. Uh, I did not have an option to um, uh, have two days off, mm -hmm. so I'm stuck in Dallas. I don't live in Dallas, and um, I wanted to spend time with my father, and I am. Well, my father lives in Virginia. He's a retired police officer from New York, but he moved to Virginia. So we talked on the phone, and I, I didn't get a chance to spend some time with him. Yeah. Yep. So you got to hang out in your truck for two days, or you uh, go and see the sights? Do you have, like, some sort of way of getting around uh, when you're uh, on the road all the time, <laughs> other uh, than using the truck? Yep. I wish. I'm stuck mm -hmm. in the truck. Yeah, the they time. don't. They don't let you drive your tractor around. Well, you should have well, one of those like, electric bicycles. So, <laughs> like, like, you're, like, let's say you're in Dallas now. Then how do you get around in Dallas if you can't use the truck to get yourself around? In other words, you're probably not going to drive it to the movie theater and leave it in the parking lot. Oh uh, well, I'm an owner operator, and yes, I will. What I do is I drop my trailer and go. Yeah. But um, when my company was um, going to tell me that I would have a load mm -hmm. and I was ready to drive at 7 o'clock in the morning and then they're going to tell me at noon or, uh, or whatever time that, oh, yeah, well, you know, mm -hmm. well, we finally got a load for you. And meanwhile, I could have been sleeping the whole entire time, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. But I guess uh, everybody's looking forward for all of the 
robots to drive the trucks and then kick us all out real quick, real soon. Hey, you know, Tad, <laughs> uh, I've, I've been beside an 18-wheeler or and also behind one when they uh, retread uh, pops off and uh, gators, it looks like gators. It, yeah, it gators looks like they flying. could kill somebody. You know, it, it's uh, uh, and I was always thinking if I was on my motorcycle behind an eighteen wheeler and that happened, I, it's all over. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know well, what's bad? Yeah. You know what's bad? Uh, Phil is being in a Miata convertible when one blows uh, right next to you. Oh, you, does that right. happen to you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, he's right. I was in my FJ Cruiser and one. And, I, and I'm right a truck driver, so I know what it's like being in the cab and by the wheel. Yeah. There you go. Fellow truck driver. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 30 years. There you go. But see, Whoa. you know what the good news is with me? Is I'm an own operator, and I try my best to put non those retreads on my truck. So this way that... They don't it, blow off. Yeah. I don't want nothing to blow. No, no, no... On nothing. Are you well, I don't running? Want, uh, what? What? Are you running super singles or, or still duels? Uh, I have um, super singles on the back, and yeah. So, so let me let me ask you a question, Todd. Um, yeah. Um, in, in 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 now I forgot what I was going to ask. See, that's what's happening to me these I days. I didn't interrupt. I know now you didn't interrupt. See me? Come on. No, finally. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. No, I well, first thing I wanted to ask you is. Do you see a lot of things from being high up and looking down at cars? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's going to do that. Sure. Yeah. Yes, I've, told, I've told some stories. So, you really want to know? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. That's, what we, that's why we're okay. here. Mm, good guess. We don't have any FCC um, things here. You could say whatever you want. Let me well, get okay, my well, wife out of the room first. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> uh, she Bye, like... dear. <laughs> yeah. She's heard them all. She's heard them uh, all. Oh, well, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I, I dealt with a lot of women that uh, were doing stuff. I dealt with a lot of um, men doing stuff to women while they were driving and looking at me like, oh, wow, you wish she was here. And yeah, I'm like looking at her like, yeah, well, I kind of do. But um, <laughs> he's there. Um, I dealt with a lot of death, which is sucks. And it, it's really bad. What do you mean? A lot um, of, what do you mean? There, what do you mean? A lot of death? Well, a lot of people that died on the side of the road or mm -hmm. got yeah. killed by the cops or um, got ran over. Um, and I had to um, happily pass by that, and um, they didn't really want to explain it. And then I, my dad's a retired police officer from New York, and I hope to have him come on your show. My mm -hmm. father, I hope he's coming on here uh, soon, if it's okay with you oh, guys. Oh, uh, it's fine. But yeah. Say what? It's fine. Yeah. Terrific. Yes. Well, right. Good, 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 good. I've been asking him for a long time, but he's, you know, old school, but, you know, he's hard-headed. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when I ask him, you know, um, I give him the, the directions, mm. uh, um, the highway, and everything like that of where, you know, the person died at. And then um, he gets a totally different story from what I saw. Like, mm -hmm. the guy got killed. He's laying on the road, the cops all around him. And um, I'm trying to figure out what happened to him because there's no car around. And, um, you know, so it's just it's, it's real sad. The he, cops have a car that they throw down if they have to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you would say that. It's a I throw down car. Yeah, uh -huh. They throw that down. With, 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 they sprinkle a little bit of crack on it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about you, Phil. You're funny. <laughs> but no, no, man. It's, it, it's sad, man, because it's like, you know, um, all jokes aside, it's like the dude's dead, and there's all cops around there. They're sitting there talking about, you know, drinking coffee, and I pass by, and I don't know. It's it's, it's horrible, man. It's, uh, it's, you have to be able to separate yourself from what's going on. You can't be part of it. You have to remain... Uh, an, an, I, I call it professional, but you know the guys that are sitting around telling jokes and, and sipping coffee uh, are, are doing that for their own sanity. Uh, you know, some you know they see it, 
day in and day out, just about. Now, and, let me uh, let me ask you, Todd. Are you married? Uh, thank the Lord. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. I'm young. Yeah. I'm probably the youngest one. I am. Um, let me think of my age because I lie to the women about my age because I'm a <laughs> truck driver. Yeah. So um, I believe I'm 46 now. Yeah. That's what I tell you guys. That's the truth age. But my uh, my lie age, you take 10 years off of that, is what I tell the women. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. But now they all know if they're watching. Yeah, but the that's show. fine. You all know. But no, all no know. women watch this. No, no huh? women watch this. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, hoping that, I'm hoping that they all will. Yeah. And I'm hoping my father will get on here because I keep trying to tell him. So, yeah, but the women I deal with, um, they're not on here, but I'm hoping they will be. And I don't have nothing to worry about. And if they did, because at the end of the day, I still tell them the truth. But, you know. Well, now, what, is, what about the uh, uh, something that's referred to as, I've heard the term, lot lizard? <laughs> no, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, well... Um, door locks huh okay <laughs> well um they're very interesting um they're really women that try to get in uh, a 18 wheelers uh a truck they want to um make, they want to um make a few dollars yes but it's, <laughs> it's worse than that it's worse than that i had a friend of mine that um, a lot lizard got in his truck, and uh, she split his throat open and killed him. Whoa. So um, yeah, my man is shaking his head with that beautiful mic that he has. He knows what I'm talking about because he's a fellow truck driver. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, it's a really um, nasty thing. Um, I don't deal with them. I'll, ta um, I'll, I'll tell you something, though. Uh, when I was at Sirius XM, I had a lot of truck drivers calling the program. And the reason we had a lot and of I truck drivers is the early, yeah, the early adopters of satellite radio were truck drivers. Why shouldn't they be? They needed the mm -hmm. entertainment, and it was there. And so I had a lot of truck drivers, and I really appreciated them. You know, I really appreciated what they did and the life they led because it's a different kind of life than, than I would want to lead. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, for a few years uh, back in the 80s, I was a manufacturer's rep and I was traveling the whole state of California, Oregon and Washington. And um, I saw a number of head on accidents, uh, you know, people passing a semi trailer truck. And then all of a sudden there's another semi trailer truck coming the other direction. And then they were flat instantly. Uh, and, you know, the only thing, if you'd stop because the traffic would stop, uh, the cops got there, they put a blanket over the car. And, uh, but I saw a lot of that, uh, especially going out to Modesto. Uh, I, I forgot the name of the highway. I think it was like 20, 209 or uh, Kevin, 205. you remember? 205. Yeah, on that one, it's like two lanes and people would pass and they're doing 90 miles an hour and boom, you, you get these head-ons. Uh, you know, it, it was... Uh, I'm sure you see a lot of those just uh, driving down the highway. I bet he sees yeah. more blowjobs than he sees that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see more um, accidents and more uh, fatalities and more uh, life flights than anything else. It's very sad. Um, um, I've been doing this for 17 years, even though I do look probably young, mm -hmm. you know, but... Uh, it's it's a hard thing, and um, you know, with the uh, with everything, you know, I try my best to save anybody's life that I can. I really don't ask for anything. I don't want any um um respect. I just do it to um, try to help whoever I can. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's real rough, but it's a job. It's something to do. It pays the bill. You yeah. Know. It definitely does. Wow. I'll tell you, That's I why would, it's so dark where I'm at. I'm in my truck. Yeah. Now, what I about want to do it nowadays because I know what it was like when I was driving. All I used to haul is hazardous materials. You had and, a nice. What's that? You had a nice compared to now. Yeah. Right the now, money. the way people drive and the phones and everything else, I, I'll tell you what. I'm glad yeah. I ain't driving now. You're lucky. 
Uh, hey, hey yeah. what do you guys what do you guys think of uh, Uber going into the trucking business? They, what? I, I, they, they are. They are. What? Yeah, Uber. Uber. Yeah. Uber is going in the trucking business. Yeah, they are. Doing wow. what? Yeah, I got all the riders. What are they gonna do? Go down the border and haul people? No, we we haul loads through Uber. We, oh. you, you, you you're like, let's just say you ain't, see my company right now. Let's just say there's oh, like a broker, like a like a online broker. There's a yeah. TV program that does that yeah. where, where you bargain for the yeah, cheapest. Yeah, that's the shipping wars. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. watch yeah. that shit all it's, the time. It's horrible. Yeah. Oh, that's that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. yeah. I can haul that load in three notes. Yeah, because you, but, because you end up you, you end up you're you're bidding and you you don't make shit on your loads. Yeah, true. I don't make a whole lot of money on my loads, but I will be able to go back to New York and and yeah, you can figure I, out where you're gonna go. Well, I mean, certain places I like to go is like Maine. I love Maine. I love going to Maine. So I mean, the the money will not be that well to get there, mm -hmm. but I miss Maine. So what, what do you, you like know? about Maine, Todd? What what is it about Maine that you like? Well, I had family up that way. Oh, I'm a New Yorker from the Bronx, New York. Okay. And um, I also love the air. Uh, I love the smell of the air and the food. Because uh, there's, <laughs> one, <laughs> stop, there's one truck stop. They got these big, huge um, what's the rolls. Word to look for? Um, <laughs> Lobster like rolls. Heroes subs. They have this one Italian sub. Take all you guys up there. You're from the I Bronx. Mean, what do you, what, Todd? What do you call a sub in the Bronx? Oh, it starts with a W. Wedge, right? You well, ask for a wedge, meatball wedge. Okay, but I'm, well, if no? I'm in the Bronx, I like pizza. Boy, you haven't been here for a long time. I've never heard that well, term in New York. Have you? Have yeah, you heard I, it, Jeff? I, 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 I was at the. I was in the like, Bronx on Saturday, and I didn't hear it. Yeah. No, you ask for a wedge, a meatball wedge. Never, never. This way they don't cut the sandwich all the way in half. They cut it like a wedge, and then they put the meatballs Phil, in it, so it doesn't. The sauce uh, doesn't you fall. Got, out. You got you uh, got three New Yorkers here, and none of us ever heard of it. I never asked. Well, uh, you you got no class. Wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> Tom. Uh, I like to take the conversation back to Uber. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? What? What's Uber's interest in it? And I think it gets back to what Todd was, was, uh, was, was talking about uh, earlier about the autonomous vehicles. I think that's that's Uber's long-term strategy. And uh, right now, I think Todd is correct. When those autonomous or self-driving vehicles come online, the first thing they're going to be doing is is doing these truck driving routes, where you're going to have these vast car caravans going. You know, you know, closely following each other uh, down the interstates. Uh, Todd, if you want, if you're interested in a book, uh, there's a guy named uh, Sam Schwartz, who mm -hmm. used to be the uh, tra head of the traffic department uh, at uh, in New York, and his nickname is called Gridlock Sam because he's he's credited with the coming up with the term gridlock. But he wrote a great book uh, they can recommend called uh, No One, Nobody at the Wheel. And I would suggest anybody interested in autonomous. Hmm. I'm going to write that. Nobody at the wheel. Nobody yeah. at the wheel. No one. Have you ever wheel. see those trucks? Well, Tesla Tesla has a truck right now that does that, right? They, they ran have a lot they of ran one trucks. for a while. They have an electric truck. Uh, yeah, but, but they've got an autonomous one too. Uh, I believe. Yeah, the, yeah but uh, they're all experimenting with it. I, I but, saw those. Oh, they have a lot. Yeah, of they're them. experimenting. Yeah. In yeah, Australia, all, where they got ooh. these. Real long hauls. They they have like uh, one cab and and four or five trailers. Yeah, they're uh, road trains. Yeah, the uh, they got the robot the trucks out now. Yeah. So they but do see, it. The, yeah. the yeah. thing that I got a problem with is with the with the autonomous vehicles with the with some of the hazardous material like stuff I used to haul is you have to monitor that stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that I used to haul that you had to stop and check every 100 miles, 150 miles. You had to miles. stop 
you had to check temperatures. You had to, you know, all that stuff. You had to go check your load how, to make well, sure it how, didn't uh, fall me, over. Me, if it was Kevin, leaking. Wait, wait, was your ask, stuff let, chemical? Let me ask you a question, though, Kevin. What, what, uh, when you did this, what kind of uh, uh, thing did you have to do? In other words, what did you check exactly? Well, you'd, you'd look to see if your load had fallen over, if it was leaking. Uh, there was logs that you had to keep, things like that. Now, some of that stuff could be automated, you know, with probably automated sensors and things like that. But, you know, uh, gases, when I was hauling gases, they had, to have, they had to be checked to make sure that they weren't leaking and that sort of thing. Uh, if they start leaking, what happens? You know, does the truck just stop there? And what happens after that? Does it automatically close the freeway and things like that? Yeah. yeah. I, I had a friend that worked for Union Carbide, and they and he used to pump the – he'd get up on top of these trucks that would pull in, and he'd put in some sort of chemical shit. This, You know, your, your face would fall off if you smelled it. But uh, yeah, they, they, in Richmond uh, is where they Thank used to you. come in and fill yeah. up with this crap, and then they sulfur or something off. like that. Yeah, oh, yep. this stuff was Thank awful. Yeah. Tank, yeah, I used stuff. to haul stuff that was in a bottle that was this big, yeah. and had this much product, and it would take out a whole county. Yep, Ooh. that's right. And it cost you about thirty thousand dollars a bottle. Wow, you're talking mm. about my mother's cooking. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then you're gonna trust robot. Uh, Robot computers that's going to drive trucks to do that. That's yeah. that's a shame. Do you think? Do you, do you think though the day is ever going to come when we do that? I mean, when they are going to going to allow uh, these robot trucks on the road, or is it just? I mean, it's something we've t- it's something we've talked about for years. But you know, look how we're going crazy over a couple of people dying from vaping for crying out loud. Think of what we're going to do when one when robot truck goes crazy. You know, yeah. another, another paper could, died today. I could see a load of paper towels or something like that going down the road and backing up to Walmart and, you know, picking up a load of paper towels or dropping it off and, you know, going somewhere else and doing that. But I couldn't see some of the other commodities going down the road doing that. They're doing it now. Yeah. I could, I could see those trains where they got like the five uh, things in Australia and they're going for hundreds and hundreds of miles. That would make sense. You know, there's nothing else on the road. In Australia, you can go for yeah, a thousand that's all miles dirt. before you have to turn. And that's all dirt and straightaways. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't have that here, Phil. You know. <clears throat> no, no, but I could see it there. You know. Yeah. I mean, they've got automated warehouses and everything like that. I used to take newspaper rolls uh, to the to the newspaper uh, warehouses where they, you know, printed newses, news, which is probably obsolete these days. Yeah. But... It was, you know, 5,000 pounds of rolls of paper, and I'd back up to the dock, and a robot would unload the truck. Mm-hmm. And, found, you know, it would come in, pick up the roll, turn it, take it off, roll through the warehouse, go to section G3, put it up on the rack, put it down, come back, get another one, and I'd just sit there and watch it do it. Yeah, I've been behind trucks that had those things and rolls of steel and stuff. I didn't stay behind those trucks very long. I always <laughs> pictured that the roll of steel would roll off. And, you know, it was only a strap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's more than that, but yeah. So I mean, Chains my question whatnot. is, I guess for for, uh, for for Todd because he's he's driving a truck right now. How has the uh, present economy affected your business? Has it, or or is it things pretty much not affected by? the political climate right now with what you do? I'm pretty much broke, but I've been broke for a while. Um, I've been driving through Clinton, uh, Obama, and uh, my fellow New Yorker, Donald Trump. And um, I'm pretty much doing... Not really that well right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much. Um, I gotta pay more taxes because um, since um, my stuff's in the storage facility, and uh, I don't know if it's him or his people decided to say that um, I have to um, pay more or. Um, since I'm living in an 18-wheeler and I don't live in a home, I have to pay $9,000 taxes added to mine. So 
I'm I'm pretty much in a a, a bad spot. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it's. I don't know. Um, is your is, is the price you, of diesel your truck, coming down? Is your truck paid off? No. No. I can't imagine what you guys are paying for fuel right now. That's what that's what I don't understand. The fuel <laughs> kills you. There was yeah. a time not too long ago, if fuel was five bucks for diesel, and uh, or that five was, fifty. You know? Yeah, in California. Was, yeah. Yeah, I remember when the the fuel was really high. That was um, when um um. Uh, what was it? Um, um, it was Bush, Bush, wasn't it? Yeah, thank you, yep. Bush. It was, yep. it was five, seven, seven. Yeah, but I made a lot of money then uh, because I had um, like a certain tax added to it. But now it's 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 real bad. It's it for me it's bad because I'm an owner operator. I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. Todd, I, I pay a fuel service ch a surcharge on every mm. on every delivery that comes into my place, carpet deliveries uh, or any kind of delivery. Uh, I not only pay for the delivery charge, but I pay a fuel surcharge. Uh, do you get, get do you get that? Uh, yes, or or does it is it just staying with the company? I get that, but it lasts. Uh, every fuel charge changes every week. Yeah. So it's really mm. not really worth a whole lot. You know, it's, it helps it's real. pay for the fuel. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey guys, I, I got to go. It's good to see hey, you. Hey, John, all. I'll call you. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Bye Take bye, care. John. Good night. Nice, nice talking to you, bro. Yeah. Uh, okay. There he goes. Uh, let me see here. Tom's uh, got his finger up. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Tom. I'm well, trying to talking maybe uh, to Todd since uh, you know, he's a truck driver and paying for fuel costs. Um, how would you feel about a uh, fee on carbon uh, to counteract, uh, well, to reduce our carbon emissions, given that you are able to pass on your fuel costs to your consumer, you know, to your customers? Uh, have you considered uh, the implications of a, of a carbon tax or carbon fee? Oh, yes. Um, I would pay it without hesitation, so I would get out of the truck and I would go back to being a chef or a mechanic or some other type of job. Uh, I have no problems with that because I think it's a good idea so that, you know, we don't keep destroying the earth, man. You know what I mean? So I, I do this as a job. Um, I started it because, you know, child support was ripping my behind and uh, that's all done. I've been doing this for 17 years now, so I'm supposed to be making good money now. I'm not. But I got everything else squared away, and I'm not in jail for not paying that. Yeah. So, yeah, I would I would have no hesitation to, of um, driving a, uh, a battery-powered 18-wheeler or just getting out of it. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Let me ask you this. We were talking sure. earlier about tires, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. How much is a tire for your one tire for your truck? <laughs> oh man! Well, I have super singles in the back, and each one of my super singles is eight hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. Are you are you sure you're from the Bronx, Todd? Uh, guys from the so. Bronx don't buy tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm you got this. You got this little wrench. Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I mean, I, hey, I don't, that's what milk boxes up. are for. I remember the days here in New York City where I used to go home every night driving up the uh, West Side Highway, and in those days you would see any number of cars up on blocks. It, they ran out yeah. and yes. stolen the tires. And by the time the guy got back, yeah. there was no tires on the car. <laughs> one, day, I, one, day, one day I was driving up there, actually, and um, um, there was a horse there, and he was missing all his hooves. It was uh, really <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> but, uh, um, oh, wow. Boy, well, that's, that's quite a business you, you have for yourself, uh, Todd. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that I could do it. I, and, I, and I think people who drive trucks are a strong bunch of people, you know, with, uh, no. you know, so. I uh, appreciate that. And I thank you guys. It's just, it's a job. It's, it's nothing to, um, you know, that 
you know, everybody else did, you know, like, you know, Phil and my other man down there that drove, drove trucks back in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, things are different, you know what I mean? So um, it's just a job. Um, we have a lot of Muslims now driving. We have a lot of um, people all over everywhere because they're trying to just pretty much get anybody to do the jobs for the cheap amount of price. So yeah. eventually um, all the good truck drivers are going to be out of the job. Why did you get out of it, Kevin? Uh, I'm old and I retired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. And, and I, you know, I was, I was moved into the office because of my leg. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that, that happened about 12 years before I retired. And, uh, you know, yeah. I ran eight drivers at that point. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, when I was driving, I was, I wasn't an over over the road driver mm-hmm. per se. I did you know the western states, but I was always home. I wasn't like Todd on the road all the time. You home? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was hourly, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was hourly, and I did some I did some uh, you know western state stuff, but I didn't. I was home most of the time. What about the physical? What, what That's about, more of a more of a uh, luxury right there. What about the physical toll it takes on you? Oh, it you beats know? the shit out of you. What does it do yeah. exactly? What what? Where does it beat the shit out of you? Because people go, oh, you're just driving around all the time. I but bet you I, blood food, clot. I hear hemorrhoids are the first. I, I bet <laughs> you it's the clot. food. The food on the road has got to be bad for you. You know, all yeah. the fried stuff and the uh, blood clots. Yeah, call the phlebitis. What do you call well, those? I, your I'm back. Sorry. You know, they always used to say, my father used to tell me, he says, there's an old rule. What you do is you, uh, you go eat where the, uh, where the truck drivers eat because they know where all the good food is. And every time I ever ate at a truck stop, it absolutely sucked. You know, <laughs> just sucked. Well, they, they give you a lot of it. But it's fried and it's, you know, uh, and I, I used to drive uh, in the south a lot, back and forth from New York to Florida. And, you know, the places you'd stop at, uh, I can't remember some of the names, but you know, had Waffle House and uh, all these things you know, off the side of the freeway or the highway. Uh, and and they, the food was all terrible, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how people don't get heart attacks uh, uh, I they s- do all the time. They do get yeah. heart attacks. Yeah, and that's the I, thing. I is pulled that... a lot of truck drivers out of trucks that died and that people couldn't um, uh, open up their doors. And, um, like, they'd be at the fuel aisle and the truck needs to move ahead. And they're like, what happened to them? And then they'd be like, you know, fellow New Yorker knows how to open up a door and, and <laughs> wink, wink, say no more. So I open up the door and uh, I have to, you know, get the truck open meanwhile the ambulance coming and i'm helping the people to put the the dead truck driver you know onto the gurney to put him you know into the ambulance um the the thing that i agree with the food is i don't eat any of the food that people eat over the road um i don't eat any fried food i don't eat a lot of certain things like that i am a christian but i do not eat any fried or pork or anything like that because that's what's going to kill me quicker driving at 18 wheeler now i have to deal with a lot of um um which in my arm right now i have a bunch of them which are knots which are they're 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 going to be soon to be formed blood clots i get them a lot in my legs so is that from sitting or from using the steering wheel or what that's from steering wheel. That's from sitting. That's from everything. I used to be a weightlifter before I became a truck driver. So I, uh, and I was a third degree martial art instructor and teacher, and I used to do that. So anything I did, and then all of a sudden I stopped it really quickly and became a truck driver, makes my body get these knots very quickly. Wow. So, Plus- yeah, it's... It, so here comes the big question. Do you have medical um, insurance? Thanks to Obama, yeah. 
Sorry, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus on top of that, you've got all the uh, the new medical requirements for your license too. I mean, you got to watch that too. Yes, I do, and uh, my company will not hire. Well, they don't help you out on any of that. You have to have that as an owner operator. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and, exactly. And are you on? Are you on two years or one year right now because of that? What owner operator? No, uh, on your renewals. I mean, do you do you have to two. because you're you're on two still? Yeah, because you, see, I was because of my leg, they were putting me on six months. I had to go I every had six that. months. Yeah. I had that for one and, year when my ex fiance um, did me dirty, and I had that for about six months. Yeah, and then and, and then my CPAP and all that stuff. See, they, they mm-hmm. they're going after everybody with their CPAP and. They're at sleep apnea and all that stuff now. So if you've got getting rid of all those drivers. If you got diabetes, I mean you're right, because I I did the same thing. I picked up a couple of truck drivers off a dock that had you know had heart attacks and died on the dock. Mm. Yeah, and you know it, 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 it's the same thing. You know, these guys were you know, I've seen okay, some wait, truck wait, wait, drivers wait, wait, that me, were lifted into their trucks with uh, forklifts. Let me you ask know, 400 a question. pounders, man. Let me ask the question that Big's it, it, asking. It's crazy. Let me ask the question that Big's asking. So why the fuck do you do this? Yeah. You know? Me? Well, the one thing, I, my, my, answer, my answer to that was I loved going to work and having the boss tell me, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You're here too long. Go, go, get out of here. And then when you get back from work, it's go home. I bet you're just driving on the road, seeing seeing the the you know the the scenery and and having something different every day. Even if you've been there before, yep. uh, it, it's it's got to be a, a wonderful thing being you know on the road. I I saw a movie recently, a documentary that got me into more of a plant based diet, and it's called a Fit. I mean, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And one of the guys that was in this was a truck driver. He was over 400 pounds. And uh, uh, he, he had a bunch of autoimmune diseases and things like that. And so he, he met this guy that was into juicing. And uh, he, he lost uh, a, a couple hundred pounds. And uh, he didn't keep it off. But he, he, he lost a, a ton of weight and, and got healthy again. But he said that he had to quit driving truck because uh, he couldn't maintain uh, a plant-based diet and juicing uh, on the road. So he got out of trucking, uh, and then he got married and he gained the weight back. But you well, know, <laughs> that, and, and a lot of these guys smoked <laughs> yeah. on top of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they'd smoke while they're eating bad food and driving, and just sitting yeah. there for hours and hours and hours. I mean, well, it's more to that though. If you ask my opinion, um, because uh, I don't. I haven't gained any weight from the last 17 years of driving truck. I weigh the exact same. Um, it's what it is is when you're an operator or not an own operator or a company driver. When the company decides to make you work your ass to your tail, and I know my man knows that that's it. Okay, so you're gonna work and then you're gonna work yourself to death. Now you have to decide. Is it important? to stop for that money to survive, to live, or you keep working and you die. And I'm, you know, it's sad because a lot of people keep working so hard and and they die when they shouldn't have to. So is this a good trade to be, to have a robot do, do the work? Is, is this something that it affects people so negatively that, that when they drive like this for a living, that they may be better off with a robot? It, it's not, uh, good. It's no. not, it's not good for Todd because it's the way. He no, well, living. not monetarily, but you know, no, if, no, if I, this I, is a job. Out. No, I, I like what I do, but you know, I, I'm, I would like to not do this job. Um, but I, I, I mean, I started it because of child support. I was a chef and I made a lot of money as a chef. And when it, the, the courts uh, charged me for one child $480 a, a, a month, I knew that for me to um, to try to put money in my pocket, I had to drive a truck. Todd, you had a deal. I was paying two grand a month. I was going to say, yeah, that sounds so how, great. How many kids? $480. I got two. What were you saying? Okay, Char- wait a minute. Hold on, a second. Hold on a second. Charlie, what were you saying? For one kid, 
for me, it was 700 and some dollars a month. Wow. Thank God I never had any kids because I've never paid an inch of alimony. So, <laughs> you know, but, no, I did. I did support. I did support, support an ex. No, what I I did support an ex-wife because of a problem she had, but I didn't have to. And in fact, when she finally we finally got the divorce, the judge says I wouldn't pay her another penny. He says you've already been too good. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically, I've never had any court tell me that I had to pay out uh, alimony. But that's why I married to Marjorie now, because we'll get divorced and I'll, I'll go get alimony from her. From, from her, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding, dear, if you're watching this. Yeah, you in trouble now, Alex. Yeah, I'm in trouble yeah. now. They, they yeah. got, when you get divorced, they got something called a disto master, or a disto meter. I forget what they call it. It's been so many years. But the, the, guy, the attorney, your own attorney, sits there and says, it's going to be this. <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and you don't have a choice because this disso master, some computer program, says that's really? what you're going to pay in alimony. That's what you're going to pay in child yeah. support. They have a formula at the in Texas, too. Yeah. Well, they have a formula in California, and I think uh, if, you're, uh, if, if you're divorced, getting a divorce, uh, you get half of, uh, you split in half everything you had after the marriage started. Yeah. In other words, which is usually you, everything. No, if, <laughs> if, if you came into, well, in, in, in my case, in a lot of cases, I had a job, I was making a lot of money and things like that, and if I got married, she wouldn't get any of what I was currently making. You did did you divorce Susan when you were unemployed? No. Uh -huh. uh, oh, you were still employed? Uh -huh. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But but now I'll tell you who who probably deserves every penny she got. The uh, the uh, the woman who uh, uh, who was the wife of the guy who started Amazon. Uh, because uh, yeah. she was hey, with him from the very beginning, and she yeah. helped be a and part he was of a that shit. business. He was a shit. Wow. He was cheating on her. Well, we're doing a lot more than cheating. Come on now. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, but I mean, did you see what he was cheating with, though? Yeah, but you know, she's walking. I mean, she's that's... walking away with something like thirty billion dollars. That's nothing compared to what he has. Doesn't he? He's got what one hundred and forty billion. Yeah. No, he doesn't have two hundred forty billion. He has about no one hundred and forty. Hundred no one hundred and twenty billion. I thought something like that. Yeah, but she, she got thirty billion, and my thinking is like uh, so. Um, that's kind of sad. She should get more if it's half. And then I'm well, thinking, an alimony, you know, I'd be happy with just a billion. <laughs> you know? She has to pay tax on that. Uh, you know, child support. I don't think you have. Uh, I don't remember if you pay tax or not. But on alimony, I think is they they you have to pay tax. Yeah, but See, I never received. I only gave. They, they, they immediately. <laughs> Same here. A, a lot of that stuff. A lot of that stuff she may get if she's got like thirty billion dollars. A lot yeah. of that is in stock, uh, yeah. and that hasn't been cashed in yet. So it only becomes taxable once it's been cashed in. I'm uh, sure there are a lot of ways that things are. You know, yeah. hidden, distributed. Uh, did you ever have to pay alimony, Tom? You don't look like the alimony sort. No, uh, when uh, when we got divorced, uh, it was very amicable. Uh, for one thing, the divorce didn't happen till uh, till about a decade after I came out as gay, mm -hmm. and uh, and and my ex wanted to remarry, and so I said, okay. We'll get uh, we'll get a divorce, and uh, our well, our oldest was was a grown adult by then, and the youngest was still in high school. And uh, I said, well, I'll put X amount of dollars, you know, into in say, you know, I'll spend promise to spend X amount of dollars. She was still living in the house. Yeah. So, but but so there was it was a very amicable divorce, and there was, you know, it, uh, you know, nothing really really uh required me to do anything financially but it worked out yeah how did she how did she take that initially when you said to her okay i'm gay or was it a gradual thing it was smart well uh it's all long ago now you know i mean it was a shock we went through counseling mm -hmm. uh here in berkeley we have a uh, a place called pacific center mm-hmm which was one of the, the oldest uh, gay, lesbian, 
you know, support agencies. And, and, and we went through counseling there and uh, it really was helpful. You know, was, I'm, I'm glad that that uh, that place exists. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, when you came to that, it, 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 obviously it wasn't an overnight decision that you made. You don't suddenly wake up more, one morning and say, I'm gay. But it, it, you had been living your life, obviously, as, try, as at least trying to be a straight person for a, long, mm-hmm. for a while. Yeah. What was that thing that made you say, OK, I, I got to be true to myself? Well, I, I, and I've talked about this before with you. I mean, I felt like I was going to have nervous breakdown. Mm-hmm. That I, I had turned 40, and uh, things were not going well for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just realized that I had to be honest. Yeah. And uh, and it was good. I wish I, I mean, you know, I wish certainly wish I had done it earlier. How, how much of that fear of not uh, of coming out of not coming out rather was predicated on the fact of people you might hurt by doing it? Yeah. Like your wife. Well, actually, I'll tell you. You know, actually, I almost came out a decade earlier. Mm-hmm. But uh, when we moved from Southern California up to Bay, to the Bay Area, I was thinking of, of coming out then. And then AIDS hit, and I just panicked. Mm-hmm. With the because nobody knew what was what was the cause. We just knew that uh, gay men were dying, and I says I don't want to risk anything, I and remember, I just stayed I, in yeah. the closet for another decade. I remember that whole thing when it first happened in San Francisco, and it was it was it was it was a mysterious disease. They didn't really know what was doing it or what the risk factors were. And uh, uh, it, it was, I remember being, I was in San Francisco at, at, at the time that San Francisco became ground zero for all of that. Yeah, yeah we yeah. both were. Yeah. Do you think that, uh, you know, th- there was a health guy from San Francisco that said it was uh, yeah, uh, right. intravenous drug use, uh, uh, blood, I, blood. I, I used to thing. know his name off and, the top of my head. And also the baths. Yeah, the, no, the, no. The gay but, baths. Well, no, uh, what happened it, was, what happened was, uh, what was his name? Do you remember his name, Tom? Because I always had it on the top of my brain the right now. My yeah. brain isn't working well. Um, but he, he was vilified by yes. the gay press. And the reason he was vilified by the gay press is he said, this disease is being spread in the uh, baths, bath in the right. bathhouses. And the bathhouses were the main advertisers for the gay press. So they started vilifying this guy like crazy. But he was right. He said, inside that place, that's a, that, Silver, hmm? Silver Burke. What? Silver Burke, was that his S- name? So, no, something S- like, Silver, I don't remember. Silver something, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't Silver but, Burke. Like, but, uh, he was the head of the San Francisco Health Department. I think the thing was a little more complicated. Well, there was a, there, you know, there was a, there was a, a play. Of, I'll tell you the truth, but, Alex. Yeah. I think a lot of it was, unfortunately, the uh, the lack of the total apathy in the part of the Reagan administration. Well, there was I mean, a, there was a play. There was a play. I by, mean, Reagan by, himself. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. could say is responsible for for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of deaths because they did nothing. Yep. They really didn't yeah. do anything. Right. And the, and the bathhouses, I mean, yeah, they were sort of late to the to the, uh, you know, to the to the you know to coming about. But once they were, they were really working to actually promote what we call safe, you know, but what for, we don't call safe time, sex. If you, if but you, there, was not, there, there was just so so little that was known. If you read um, what's his name, there were many of us that were just panicked in, into to not doing yeah, anything but at if, all. If you read the band played on by uh, my friend, yeah, huh? yeah, I've got it. I've got that book. <laughs> yeah, by, What's the guy's name? Tom. Oh, what? Randy Schultz. Randy Schultz. Yeah. I used yeah, to have him Randy on my show Schultz. all the time. And he his take on it was that the gay press for the longest time was denying that the baths were doing this because the baths were their main source of income. And so they also, were defending the baths. And the, they the, were also defending their lifestyle. Schultz, they didn't no, want... no, Schultz put the 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 burden of the uh, of of what can we call it, stupidity or lack of doing anything at the at the feet of these newspapers, of these gay newspapers, because for the longest time, uh, and it, it was something like Silverstein. I think it, well, maybe it was Silverstein. It was, what was Silverman? this gay newspaper? Well, wait a minute, hold on a second. It, uh, uh, the Graduate Charlie, or something like Charlie? that. Charlie? 
Uh, uh, I think you're right, Alice. I think it was Silverstein. It was Mervyn Silverman. Mervyn Silverman. Yeah. Okay. But there was a play years ago when I was studying acting called An Enemy of the People by Ibsen. I believe Mm -hmm. it was Ibsen. And you know what the play is about? A a, a doctor who says uh, the baths are causing disease. And so they vilify him and they throw him out of town and everything like that. He becomes an enemy of the people. And I kind of felt that Silverstein was this guy. You know, this was the play being lived out in real life. Because he was trying to just warn and say, hey, this, you know, at least we have some idea of where we can go and, and slow this thing down. And you knew guys, right, Tom, that were dying of AIDS. And I knew guys. Everybody in San Francisco knew at least one person who was dying of AIDS. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my yeah. case, it was a yeah. comedian. Uh, I get, I did a job on State Street, which is right off of Market and Castro, mm-hmm. and uh, on the Divisadero side. Yeah. And this whole apartment building, everybody in it was dying of AIDS. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it was an amazing experience, not in a positive way, but uh, to to be able to be there and and see what was going on. You know, I'd had a knock on the, I was doing the hallways. I had a knock on the door to to do the the door area yeah. and you know every every unit people would open up and they were uh, like skeletons again my uh, mind is a blank but there was this comedian and uh, he died of AIDS um, and we were all you know and, and every, a lot of people were amazed because they didn't know he was gay but in comedy you don't suddenly say hey I'm gay let's do some comedy you know uh, but he uh, it was it, it, everybody knew somebody who was dying and, it, and I always thought that was so, what was so dreadful about AIDS was that the very thing that is the expression of caring between one person and another was now something that could kill you. And, and I always found that really, really uh, very sad. Today, we don't seem to have the problem as much anymore because they got the cocktails and it's manageable. Yes, Tom? Well, I say, you could illustrate my point why would, would someone would stay in a closet for another decade. Yeah. Uh, but I also, uh, the closest person to me that died of AIDS was actually a, uh, a former housemate who was a woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she was also a heavy drug user, too. Yeah. So, uh, and it's interesting that, that her boyfriend was HIV negative. Well, I had a friend, mm-hmm. I had a friend, and you, you know who he was, named Warren Thomas. Mm-hmm. And Warren was Thomas, comedian? Yeah, okay. Warren, Tom, right. Warren Thomas came down with AIDS. Uh, but he wasn't gay. What yeah. happened was he had phlebitis, which is a blood clot in the legs. And Truck he, driver. And he went to San Francisco General Hospital, and they gave him blood transfusions. And they the, weren't checking. And the blood those supply years. wasn't yeah. checked in those days for AIDS, and he came down with full-blown AIDS. I mean, mm. he went down to a T-cell count of three. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze here. That happened to Arthur. Bless you. Mm. A, a, a Ibsen died in 1906, yeah. so it was a little bit before the epidemic. Oh, yeah, uh, but, I mean, but, still, and... but still it reminded me of that play, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a really very, very interesting story. But anyway, it, you know, um, but Warren eventually died, and I don't know that it wasn't as a result of complications from AIDS. Not that the AIDS itself killed him, but... I don't know. We, they found him dead. Pneumonia. He was here in New York. They found him dead in his apartment. And to this day, we've never really been told why he died. You know, but uh, one of the funniest comics I ever knew. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, he was I, great. I remember, actually, I remember being in the studio. Yeah. With, with Warren Thomas and Stephen Pearl. Nobody could. And, nobody could. Oh, that, nobody, I mean, that yeah. was just. Nobody could riff like uh, Warren Thomas. Oh, he Warren was great. Thomas was the king of the riffers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he but, was wonderful. I, I really, I really treasure those days. Oh, yep. Yeah. See you Tuesday. It's going to be a, a fill safe week. <laughs> Boy, I mean, you're not going to be here Thursday uh-huh. either. No. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh. That quick? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> see you uh-huh. later, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll call wow. him from the cigar, uh, the, the cigar place. I'm uh, 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 Paul uh, Young, uh, the uh, one of the guys that yeah. listens to the show. We get together for cigars occasionally. Okay. 
Anyway, uh, everybody, uh, it would be very nice if you would like give a big wave goodbye to the audience out there. Let me thank Tom. Let me thank Todd. Call again, Todd. You were terrific tonight. Jeff, great talking to you. Uh, um, um, uh, <laughs> Kevin, thank you. Charlie, thank you. And thanks, of course, to Phil. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back. And everybody at home, you can wave at them as well. And that's our citizen panel. Let me hang up on them here. There, we did that. And then uh, we uh, turn off our Skype. And then we hang up our Skype. And then the next program, which is uh, Jack Bishop and the Intersection, can use the Skype. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to go away for about uh, 20 hours, 24, 22 hours. Oh, God. 22 hours. And then I'll be back here again uh, tomorrow night, uh, right after the... Uh, Dom, uh, Damian Chaplin does his exchange program at 9.30. Oh, wait a minute. We also have the sports program tomorrow night at uh, 8.30. So 8.30, sports program, 9.30, Damian Chaplin, and then I'll be back on at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.